All right, all right. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It's good to have you on. It's good to have you on. Please, as you come on, share this. Tag somebody, have a watch party, whatever's necessary. Please invite people on to join. Come on, come on. It's going to be amazing. Come on. We're excited to have you come on and join us. This is a different life. This is a different life, and we definitely want to have you on tonight as we study God's word. We're only going to be on for a few minutes, so please join us. Please join us. Let's open up in prayer. God, we thank you and celebrate you for this day. We praise you and give you all honor and glory because you're truly an amazing God. You're all powerful, all knowing, ever present, always in control, never caught off guard. Nothing happens unless you allow or command it. So God, we just so excited about this opportunity to study your word and to get raw into relationships. God, right now, we simply ask that you inhabit, dwell in this word and allow your points to come out, allow those to be touched and allow them to be able to identify the spirit of manipulation that may be operating in them or in the people they're dealing with. God, we're so thankful. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Listen, I'm glad to have you on. What's up, Nap? Glad to have you on as we talk about this topic. So this is the Life Center. This is a different life, a cyber study. And our emphasis is learning how and starting now to live a different life. So again, we're excited to have you on. Hey, Tanya. I want you to take your Bibles tonight. We're, we're in this February series called Relationships in the Raw, and we're getting deep and dirty in relationships. Um, so I want you to get your Bibles, and I want you to turn with me real fast to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12, and we want to look at verse number 10. Genesis chapter 12, verse number 10. Share it. Let other people know about it tag some people in it. It's going to get good. 27 minutes. Genesis chapter number 12. Genesis chapter number 12, beginning at verse number 10, it says this, now there was a famine in the land and Abram went down to Egypt to dwell there for the famine was severe in the land. And it came to pass when he was close to entering Egypt that he said to Sarai, his wife, indeed, I know that you are a woman of beautiful countenance. Therefore, it would happen when the Egyptians see you, that they will say, this is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will let you live. Please say that you are my sister, that it may be well with me for your sake, and that I may live because of you. I want to talk today or teach today from this thought, this thought, manipulating to have my way, manipulating to have my way. It was interesting. I was in a, a seminar today about sex trafficking, and they talked about the sex that's fact that sex trafficking is done by three different ways, by force, by fraud, or by coercion, by force, by fraud, or by coercion. Force, like taken, they snatch you up. Fraud, by, by presenting to you a false idea that you fall for, or by coercion which is by manipulation or psychological um, misleading. And so I thought about this, this, this manipulation and how oftentimes in relationships, we find ourselves either being manipulated or manipulating. I wanna read some quotes about manipulation. Here's the first quote. If you allow people to make more withdrawals than deposits in your life, you are out of balance and in the negative, know when to close your account. Here's another another quote by J.M. Storm. It says, and if you could make your make you, if I could make you understand one truth, it would be this. Someone who manipulates your feelings through guilt isn't loving you. That's an attempt to control you, and that has nothing to do with love. Let me read one more. The conscious and intelligent manipulation of the organized habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in democratic society. Those who manipulate 
this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible, go invisible government, which is the true ruling power of the country. And in fact, we see that all the time. In fact, maybe the reason we manipulate is because we see so many examples of manipulation in our day to day. This collusion, this, this government we have that posts what they want, that says what they want, whether it's true or not, that's a form of manipulation. But it's also, there is manipulation in relationships. So let's get to the text. This text is amazing text. This is the promise of Abraham. Abraham has been sent to leave his father, his father's house, his own country, and sent to the promised land. But on the way to the promised land, there's a famine in the land. And this famine then leads him to make the decision to go to Egypt. Now, on his way to Egypt, he has a conversation with his wife that is full of manipulation in an effort to save his life. He tells her, listen, you're beautiful. They're going to want you. Let them have you and just say you're my sister. And when you do that, you'll save my life. So, so the crazy thing is, is that this manipulation is, is his way of getting his way. And I don't know if any of you have experienced that. Anybody ever experienced somebody manipulating you just to get their way? They say what they need to say. They do what they need to do all in an effort to have their way. And oftentimes in the moments of manipulation, we think it's about us, but we realize after being manipulated that it was never about us in the first place. So the question is, what's wrong with manipulating to get my way? What's wrong with me manipulating to get my way? Well, here's the first thing, I manipulate because though I want God's promise, I don't wanna follow God's process. Though I want God's promise, I don't wanna follow God's promise, process. So I manipulate. Where do you see that at? Well, go back to the original promise. God told Abram in Genesis chapter 12, verse one, get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And in all the families of the earth, you will be blessed. Verse four says, so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. He, here's the crazy thing. Abram left trusting God. Abram left believing what God said until a part of the process got rough and all of a sudden he believed in the promise, but he no longer trusted God's process. So in other words, the text says in chapter 10 that famine came. So, so everything was good. He was willing to go and believe. He was willing to trust and follow. But the reality is when the process got rough, he thought he had to take it into his own power. And oftentimes we manipulate when we no longer trust God's process. God promised us to be married, but when it's taking too long, all of a sudden we got to manipulate to get us a boot. Or God, God said we're going to be a homeowner, but when it gets hard, all of a sudden we got to manipulate the process. God says we're going to be financially stable. So it's tax time and all of a sudden now we don't trust the process. We got to manipulate the numbers and the figures to get the outcome we want. So I manipulate because though I want God's promise, I don't want to follow God's process. Here's the second thing. I manipulate because I trust, I put my trust in my tongue and not in God's tongue. So God has spoken and said this powerful word that Abram trusted, but then things get rough. And so all of a sudden, Abram now becomes more trusting in his own tongue. So in relationships, it looks like this. Now, now I know where I want to go. I know where God has shown me. So now I'm going to take the time to use my own words, not God's words. I'm going to use my own words to try to get the outcome I think is necessary. So I'm going to sweet talk you. I'm going to promise you. I'm going to look you in your eye and tell you I love you just so I can get with you when in fact I don't I don't necessarily really feel that way, but to get what I want out of the situation, I use my, I trust my tongue. In fact, 
they talked about at this at this sex trafficking workshop that one of the main class of trafficking comes from Romeos in school. Those persons that say all the right words, they smooth talk and sweet talk the girls or the guys, more so the girls because there's a higher percentage of girls in sex trafficking. And they, by the time the girls get so wrapped up in their words, they're able to tell them, look, I need you to lay with this person to get this money. I need you to do this to get this money. And, and so they get sucked into the words. And so manipulators trust their tongue more than they trust God's tongue. They, 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 they believe in the power of their tongue. And you got to be careful about people who profess to believe what God says and then use their own words to manipulate and to change. Can I tell you what that looks like in the church? That looks like girl, that looks like people that twist scripture for the purpose of getting an expected outcome. So they say what sounds good to evoke an emotional experience and then lead you to be misled for the sake of their own purposes. Ah, but in relationships, it's deadly because when you begin to trust someone's word, their words seep into your heart. And so you believe them with your heart. Can you imagine the young girl that 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 wants to hold on to God's word of staying chaste until marriage? But the guy says, listen, we're going to get married. I love you. And she falls in love with his words, gives herself to him. And before you know it, he's on to the next on on to the next one. All right. Here's the third thing. I manipulate because I want to keep you in the dark so you can't decide your own destiny. I, I manipulate because I want to keep you in the dark so you can't decide your own destiny. It's, it's right there in the text. The text says this. Listen, it's right there. Verse 10 says there was famine in the land. Verse 11 says it came to pass when he was close to entering Egypt that he said to Sarai, indeed, I know that you are a beautiful woman of beautiful countenance. So, so watch this. Um, um, the whole time they're traveling, he says nothing about where they're going. He knows where they're going, but it's not until they're about to enter the city of Egypt that he decides to include her in the conversation. Ooh, so, 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 so he keeps her in the dark because if he would have said so earlier, she would have tried maybe possibly to persuade him to do something different. But because he wanted the control of the decision-making process, he kept her in the dark. Woo, God. Manipulators know to only reveal information when they feel that their plan is being threatened. So they keep you in the dark. They maneuver until A, their plan is threatened, or B, they have gotten themselves in a hole that they then need yourself, your help, to get out of. But you know what it looks like? It looks like you're in a relationship and all of a sudden you come home and you see an eviction notice on your door. Now hold on, because you've been paying the bills, you're part of the bills, and your partner never said that there was trouble because eviction doesn't come after one payment, it comes after several payments. So somehow they haven't included you in the payment process until you come home and there's an eviction notice. You come home and the lights are off. You come home and there's some other situation that's awry. They've kept you in the dark because they wanted to limit your ability, your decision-making ability towards your own destiny. Ah, God told Moses to go, um, but Moses didn't go. Moses went his own, I mean, not Moses, Aaron, Abram went his own way, and in Abram going his own way, he then kept Sarai out of the loop. And so you got to be cautious about people who only tell you information on a need-to-know basis. If the only time they can tell you information is when they feel you need to know, then they're controlling your information and hence manipulating you. Whew, goodness, this is good. Here's the next thing. I manipulate by isolating you so that I can have more influence over you. Oh, I manipulate you by isolating you so that I can have more influence over you. Okay, I know you're like, what's that? Where's that in the text? Well, 
God told Abram to leave. Abram left and took Lot. But by the time they get to Egypt, only Abram and Sarai are there. So Lot has now been left somewhere else. Why? Why? Lot, Lot could have thrown a wrench in Abram's plan. If Lot would have not have lined up with the timeline of being a child of Abram, or, or would have been listed as nephew or Sarah's son, then that might have thrown off the ability to maneuver stealth, stealthily in Egypt. So he limits Lot's participation. When you have a person with a manipulating spirit, they want to control who you're in contact with. They, they want to police your friends list. They, they, they want to limit your time out. They, they want to they wanna keep you. They want to only allow you to talk to the people that push their thought process or push their perspective. Oh, man. They, they, they don't want you Googling for information. They don't want you uh, 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 putting your issues on Facebook. They, they want to keep you contained because they want to be the only voice you listen to. Woo! God, you, you can tell. A manipulator because they are, their facial expression changes when you start talking about suggestions you heard outside of their scope of influence. Oh, God. So, so when you tell them about what so-and-so said, their face balls up because they want to know how did they allow you to get access to outside information? Oh, goodness. Mm -hmm. Manipulators want to isolate you. They want to be the only ones feeding you information. Uh, they want to provide you with their slants. In the government, oh man, in the government, that's why it's so important that you look at world news from more than just a US perspective. Because if you just look at it from a US perspective, you will be manipulated to think the way that, that, that the media wants you to think. But when you look at it from BBC, or from some other world news outlet that's not as vested in the United States, you'll see a different perspective. Manipulators want to keep you confined to a particular way of thinking so that they can then have the most influence over you. Whew, goodness, 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 goodness. I gotta go, I got 10 minutes. Here, here's the next thing. I manipulate because I don't trust the tenacity of the truth in trouble. I, I manipulate because I don't trust the tenacity of the truth, the ability of the truth to overcome in times of trouble. Look at what he says. Look at Abram is so so stealthily, so, so sophisticated in his manipulation. Look at what he says. Verse 11. He says, indeed, I know that you are a, a woman of beautiful countenance. Therefore, it will happen that the Egyptian will see you and they will say, this is his wife and they will kill me, but they will let you live. Woo, man, man. So, so what he's saying is, listen, here's the truth, we're married. The truth is we're married, but I don't think the truth of our marriage will stand the turbulence of an Egyptian king wanting you for himself. So I'm going to to change the story. I, I, I know we're married, but I'm willing to lay down our marriage for the sake of preserving our lives, my life. I, I don't trust that God's truth in providing for me is going to stand the turbulence of the trouble of the Egyptian king wanting you. Mm, okay, so, so, so I manipulate you because I don't think the truth is gonna stand the trouble. So back to the home. I didn't tell you that I was spending money on something else because I didn't think you would handle that and it would cause me, cause an argument. So I didn't tell you and now I've gotten myself in such a hole that the eviction notice is on the door. I, I didn't tell you that, that I, was, I was staying late at work so that I could drink or go to happy hour with the crew because I didn't think that you would allow me to or you would be pleased with it. So I lied and said I was working late. All of that is manipulation because I don't believe that the truth is strong enough to stand the trouble. Mm, God, so, so, so I tell you half truths or I bend the truth 
in an effort to manipulate you into believing my side and not questioning me because I don't believe that the truth in itself is strong enough to stand the trouble. Oh, God, man, man. So, so, so we often get manipulated. And, and, and the crazy thing is a half truth is still an untruth. So, so just because you tell me enough to keep me from questioning doesn't mean you've told me the whole truth. And so in that, I'm manipulating you because I don't think that the truth has the tenacity to withstand the oncoming trouble. Hmm, man, man, okay, I gotta go, I got one more though. I manipulate because I'm selfish, but I'm willing to sacrifice you. I, I, I manipulate because I'm selfish. I want to save myself, but I'm willing to sacrifice you. Look, look at what it says. Verse 13 says, please say you are my sister, that it may be well with me for your sake and that I may live because of you. Okay, listen, did you hear what he said? He said, please say that you are my sister, that it may be well with me for your sake and that I may live because of you. Now you didn't catch it because you didn't read verse 12. Verse 12 says, therefore it will happen when the Egyptian sees you that they will say this is his wife and they will kill me, but they will let you live. Okay, maybe you missed it. So, so it gets tricky now and I manipulate you because I'm selfish, but I'm willing to sacrifice you. It gets tricky now because his whole reason for getting her to, to lie or manipulating her to lie is not about her, but it's to save his own life. Because look at what he says. He says, listen, the king, the pharaoh, is going to let you live. He's going to kill me, but he's going to let you live. But then he says, say you're my sister, then it may be well for me for your sake. But remember, she's going to be good either way because she's going to be living with Pharaoh. So it really wasn't about her. He was manipulating to save himself. And oftentimes in relationships, the manipulation comes, even though they make it feel about you, it's really about them. See, the reason they don't want you to go out is because they don't want you to see nobody else that that may get your eye and cause you to think twice about them. The reason they don't want you to go to conferences is because they don't want to see, allow your mind to be opened and exposed to things that take you out of the isolated bubble they've kept you in. The, the reason they don't want you to go out with your girls is because your girls may talk about where they saw you at, <laughs> where they saw him at. And so they, he wants to keep you isolated. So again, manipulation is all about self-preservation. It's not even about you. It's a selfish attempt to try to sacrifice you and your happiness for the sake of saving oneself. Woo, golly. So, so the crazy thing is she went along with it. Mm. And so many times we find ourselves going along with what we don't necessarily agree with because of the way it was sold to us. So it was sold to us in such a way that makes us think it's about us. And we think, oh, they're so awesome because they're thinking about us until after we've been manipulated and we realize, hold on, they only said what was necessary to save themselves. And in the end, we're the ones being sacrificed. We're the ones sitting at home. We're the ones not having a social life. We're the ones with the eviction notice on the door after we've spent the money for the bill, but it wasn't used for the bill. We're the ones doing without because we have allowed their selfishness to cause us to sacrifice our own selves. Whew, golly, this is, this is serious. This is serious. Now, now, now here's the danger and I'm done. I got, I got two more things as sidebars. The first danger in manipulation is manipulation can also be seen in duplication by future generations. Watch this, this is Abram and his wife Sarai. But look at what happens in Genesis chapter 26 
verse number six. Genesis chapter six, 26, verse six says this. So Isaac dwelt in Gerar and the men of the place asked about his wife and he said, she is my sister for he was afraid to say she is my wife because he thought lest the men of the place will kill me for Rebecca because she is beautiful to behold. Hold on. This is Abram's son, Isaac, and his wife, Rebecca. And Abram's son, Isaac, is repeating the cycle of manipulation that his father did even before he was born. So it has become a generational curse. And manipulators, if you're not careful, you'll see the same spirit of manipulation manifest itself in your children. You, you'll see the same pattern of manipulation manifest itself in your children. First, they'll try to manipulate you, and then they'll take that same manipulation into their relationships. Oh, God, God, I can't leave you with bad news, though. Ah, God, I know you've seen it. You've seen your children say things to manipulate you, and you're like, where they got that? Where did they get that from? Well, they learned it from watching your own manipulative behaviors. Okay, okay. Ah, let, let me leave on good news, though. You ready? Here, here's the good news. Let's, let's go back to Genesis chapter 12. Here's the good news. The Lord won't let the manipulation become master. He will step in. It's right there. It's right there in the text. Verse, verse number 17 says, but the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai. Oh man, look at it. Oh God. The Lord did not plague Pharaoh because of Abram. He plagued Pharaoh because of Sarai. Oh God. Oh man. So, so, so God stepped in in the manipulation and did not allow it to become master, not because of Abram, but because of Sarai. In other words, those who are, are victims of manipulation will get to experience the victory that comes from God. Oh, God will step in. God will interfere. God will intercede because he will not allow the manipulation of man to trump the master's power. He, he will not allow man's manipulation to get in the way of his plan. Remember, go back to the promise. He said, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. Now, though he was talking to Abram, it covered Sarai because Sarai was Abram's wife. Oh God, oh man. Can I tell you why that blessed me? Because even in relationships, God has a way of stepping in and exposing and trumping the manipulation that goes on in relationship. He will send a word. He will step in and send a plague. He will make things go awry so that the manipulation never becomes the master. Oh, God. I just need, somebody just needs to let that resonate. <laughs> Somebody just needs to let that resonate. Yes, they think they're manipulating you, but hold on, God's gonna step in. Yes, they think they have the final word. Yes, they think they pulled the wool over your eyes. Yes, they think they've won, but God will step in. <laughs> Let's pray. God, we thank you. We praise you that your mercy interceded and stepped in to cover manipulation, that your mercy did not allow manipulation to win, that even though we may have felt manipulated, God, your mercy stepped in and had the final say. So God, we just thank you for your mercy. God, we ask that you open our eyes tonight to allow us to see manipulative behaviors. We ask God that you allow us to see those who seek to sacrifice us for the sake of saving themselves. God, we just praise you in advance and we trust you enough that you're going to protect your children. We love you and praise you. In your son Jesus name we pray. Amen. Woo! Man, man, listen, we are casting out manipulators. 
We're casting out those who, who bind people in the spirit of manipulation. In fact, we're loosing those who found themselves bound in the spirit of manipulation. It sounded good. It seemed good. But you realize now it wasn't good. Do not allow manipulators to have the final say. Trust that God is going to step in the same way he stepped in and plagued Pharaoh's house for the sake of Sarai. He's going to step in your house and save you from the manipulation. Listen, I thank you for being on and joining us. I, I can't leave without offering you the opportunity to connect. If you find yourself um, needing to be connected to Christ, meaning you've never accepted him as your Lord and Savior, and you want to be connected to Christ, you want to confess him as your Lord and Savior and say you believe that God raised him from the dead, and you want to be saved, and you want to have him as your Savior and Lord, simply wave your hand. Secondly, if you want to reconnect, meaning you, you may have been a manipulator or maybe you've been manipulated and you've turned your back on Christ. You've strayed away from the Lord and you want to come back and reconnect to him today. If that's you, simply wave your hand. If simply wave your hand. Thirdly, if you want to connect to the Life Center, if you want to get more details about upcoming programs, if you want to connect to the cyber community of Christ followers, or if you want to be covered by us, if you want to join us and actually become a member of the Life Center, simply go to our website, www.tlcsumter.org and hit the connect tab. Put your information in there or look for the pop up, put your email address in there and get connected today. And finally, if you want to connect through contribution, if this, this, this message about manipulation has added value to your life, has opened your eyes to things you hadn't prior seen, hadn't seen priorly, priorly, prior, hadn't seen prior to this, then simply um, you can you can connect through contribution through Cash App, GiveLify, or PayPal, TLC Sumter for all three, for all three. Listen, I thank you for being on. Um, we're getting ready to jump on our first session of the Financial Fitness Boot Camp. I appreciate those who signed up. If you haven't signed up, I think I have three slots available. You can simply inbox me right now. I can send you the link. We start at 915. Um, I invite you out Sunday as we continue this Relationships in the Raw series, Sunday at 6 at the Mocha Soul Cafe, and then Tuesday for happy hour at the Red Dot Hookah Lounge from 530 to 730. Oh, man, listen. Ah, um, Tuesday night at happy hour, we're going to address surviving Amnon, surviving Amnon. It's going to be an in-depth discussion about incest, um, rape, and molestation that occurs in the family. It's not going to be televised. It's going to be live, but you definitely don't want to miss it. See you Tuesday night. And um, Sunday, we're going to deal with your womb won't win him. Your womb won't will win him. And we're going to address um, the manipulation that comes from persons having babies, um, thinking that that's going to win the, the relationship. So that's going to be Sunday night. Your womb won't win him. And then Tuesday night, we're going to deal with surviving Amnon. Woo! Listen, you don't want to miss any one of these. Any one of these. All right. So listen, I love you. Thank you for being on. Karen sends her love from the back room. Um, we'll talk to you soon. To God be the glory. Share this, comment on it, and let uh, invite other people to, to get involved in this relationship in the raw conversation. To God be the glory.